Bellator 255 will debut on Showtime in spectacular fashion. One of the top pound-for-pound -pound fighters in MMA and Bellator double champion, Patricio Pitbull, will put his belt on the line in the semifinals of the Featherweight Grand Prix against Emmanuel Sanchez. This is a rematch from 2018 in which Pitbull took home the decision, but Sanchez is undefeated since and believes he now has what it takes to get by Pitbull. Waiting for the winner in the final is the electrifying AJ McKee and a million dollar check for the winner. I'm not sure there's a bigger fight you can make in the Bellator cage between two fighters in the square of their primes than Pitbull and the undefeated AJ McKee. But Emmanuel Sanchez has no plans on letting that happen. Can he pull off the upset and punch his ticket to the final or will Pitbull keep dominating in style? I'm the best shooter in the world. This time is going to be different. I'm going to finish him. You know that. It's win or go home. Who will advance to the featherweight Grand Prix final? We're going to find out Friday night only on Showtime. Yeah, Bellator blasting off on Showtime this Friday, April the 2nd. And then a bunch more to come the following weeks, April the 9th, April the 16th, and then into May as well for that Rumble Johnson, Yoel Romero co-main event. And here are the very first Bellator pound-for-pound -pound rankings on the men's side. Patricio Pitbull leading the way, followed by Vadim Nemkov. On the women's side, Chris Cyborg just ahead of an unbeaten star, Juliana Velasquez. All right, let's break it down. Brian Campbell, morning combat. Also, a vote that helped shape these first pound-for-pound -pound rankings. Let's start at the very top on the men's side, Patricio Pitbull, top in the men's rankings. He's number one in multiple divisions, BC, and we're looking forward to that fight coming up on Friday. No question about it. Look, if you don't know how good Patricio Pitbull is, tune in on Friday night at Showtime. You're talking about one of the best fighters pound for pound in the world. Look, he's the face of the franchise for Bellator MMA, holds the promotional record for most victories. But when you look at what he's able to do, regardless of weight, right, Featherweight champion moved up a year and a half ago, knocked out Michael Chandler with one punch to become the promotion's lightweight champion. Now he's even flirting with the idea after this featherweight tournament is over with maybe moving down to bantamweight and trying to secure a title in a third weight division. He's a slugger. He's tough on the ground. He goes for the finish every single time. And his rematch Friday against Emmanuel Sanchez is one of the better fights that this company can make. Nemkov coming in at number two in the men's rankings. How did that compare to your ranking of these guys? I've got Vadim Nemkov right there atop the light heavyweight division, and I think he's a top three fighter at the moment as well within Bellator. He kind of came out of nowhere, a Russian fighter, uh, a mentee to the great mentor, Fedor Emelianenko. He's got that Sambo background. But most importantly, when he entered Bellator, he went right after the light heavyweight top 10, defeating four straight former champions. He knocked out Ryan Bader to win the title. Now he enters what is a very must-see, sexy eight-man tournament for light heavyweight for Bellator, 205 pounds as the champion, but also the betting favorite coming in. And I think that's right. He can wrestle you to the ground. He's an excellent striker. And at 28, he seems to just be figuring out right now how good he can be. There are some fun matchups you can make moving forward in this tournament with Vadim Nemkov as your champion. Here we go. And you saw the, the top 10 pound for pound. No Rumble Johnson, no Romero. What do they need to do in that light heavyweight Grand Prix to get there? Uh, well, they got to fight each other and make fireworks. Let's be honest here. This is the must-see fight of this entire tournament. When Rumble Johnson, a former title challenger with the UFC, one of the best knockout punchers in the history of this sport, takes on Yoel Romero, the ageless wonder, at age 43. Uh, originally, that fight was going to be April 16th. Now it's pushed off until May 7th. But what you're going to see there is the winner could end up being your sort of sneaky favorite for this tournament. Vadim Nemkov is your betting favorite. He's the champion. But Anthony Johnson's been off for a few years in a self-imposed retirement. He can knock anyone out at any time. And even though Romero is 33, 43, excuse me, he'll be moving up to light heavyweight. He's an excellent wrestler. This is one of those fights where you just don't know what it's going to look like, but you have to tune in to see it. And you also have to believe whoever wins that is going to catapult themselves within the top 10 of the Bellator pound for pound rankings. These Grand Prix are why a lot of fans are really gravitating toward Bellator. That's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go over to the women's side.
and Cyborg atop the pound for pound rankings. Is there anyone in that featherweight division who you think can, can knock her off anytime soon? I don't think so. She defeated Julia Budd, who had been the longtime title holder in Bellator. I could see that rematch maybe happening, but outside of that, Chris Cyborg is a legend. It, it it would not be wrong, let's say. I know Amanda Nunes is is who we consider the greatest of all time on the female side, the two-division UFC champion. But it wouldn't be wrong if you look at what Chris Cyborg has accomplished in her great career, career and put her right there as well. No matter what promotion she's entered, she's knocked people out to become a champion. She's 35. Is she slowing down? Maybe just a bit. But her power is still otherworldly. She's a huge draw for Bellator. It was a big free agent signing. So it's going to be interesting to see as the women who have next start to climb this ladder, can somebody slow her down? And this Friday, as we mentioned, beginning a, a huge stretch for Bellator on Showtime. What is your fight to watch over the next month, month and a half? Well, I certainly did mention that Rumble Romero fight, which you just got to tune in to see it. But how about a sleeper fight that you need to be uh, on the lookout for? It's that same night, May 7th, in the main event, when Juan Archuleta, your reigning Bellator Bantamweight champion, takes on a name a lot of us know, Sergio Pettis, former UFC fighter, the younger brother of the great Showtime Anthony Pettis. He has really figured out in his own late 20s right now how good he can be. He's on a three-fight win streak. And you look at Juan Archuleta, we saw him initially in the featherweight Grand Prix, which is ongoing. Although he came up with a loss, he has rebounded nicely, won the vacant title over Patchy Mix. He's got a fun, aggressive style. He loves to wear that cowboy hat at the press conferences to tell you that he's a gunslinger and he's coming for the knockout. This could end up being one of those sleepy five-round all-action wars that decides who's the man at 135. And again, that one's May 7th, just like the uh, Rumble Johnson Romero fight as well in the Grand Prix. BC, thank you so much for the time. You can hear much more from him on the Morning Combat podcast. Very latest episode reacting to UFC 260. But they're also very shortly going to be looking ahead uh, to the weekend to come and the big start for Bellator on Showtime. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.